joining us live now are Lawrence and Mary Ann Sunderland, Abby's parents, and Zach Sunderland, <laughs> Abby's brother, who also sailed solo around the world at the age of 17, I think. Welcome to all of you. And I can only imagine how relieved you must all be this morning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so tell us, Lawrence, and why don't you start out, what's, what's the latest information you have on Abby right now? Uh, the latest information we have on Abby right now, a uh, plane flew over her late our time in the evening, that's LA time, and uh, about 11 o'clock, and they managed to make contact via the VHF radio, and they did, had a visual on Abigail. The boat is right side up, we, the boat has been dismasted, and um, she's there on the ocean, she appears to be safe, she said that she was fine in the communication with the uh, Australian search and rescue and as soon as they got the information they relayed it to us at base here in Thousand Oaks and we are very very relieved to so get the information. It, so they actually had the chance to, 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 to talk to her, what specifically did she say? We don't know specifically apart from that she did say that she was fine, which is uh, very typical for Abigail in most situations. Um, but uh, we were just relieved to know that the boat was right side up, or is right side up, and um, th that she is comfortably uh, on that boat and it's not taken on water, although the rig has been compromised so she can't sail anywhere. I remember she's just drifting in the ocean. Reading about what was happening yesterday, uh, the distress signals went off. Uh, Abby was actually talking to you on the phone, Lawrence, I believe, and then the phone just went silent. And, and, and Marianne, I, for all those hours between when that phone just clicked off and you heard from the rescue teams, uh, what was going through your mind? What was going through your heart? Well, I, I. I think I knew in my heart that she was okay, um, but your mind does um, play out different scenarios. It was a very, very difficult several hours. We knew that her boat would stay afloat. It's designed for the Southern Ocean. It has positive flotation. It's very, very difficult to sink, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't dark, cold, and frightening, and so it, it was very difficult. Zach, you went around the world by yourself at 17. What advice did you give Abby about handling a situation like this, which you would have to expect something like this would come up? I just told her to kind of be ready for it because when you're doing a trip like this, you're out at sea for such a long time. At some time or another, you're going to have a, a crazy storm or something's going to break. And, um, you know, Abby has made it quite far on her trip, but she's definitely got what it takes to uh, deal with situations like this. She's able to tap into, you know, not be scared in situations and, uh, Get through, uh, get through crazy times, and I think that's probably what's helped her out quite a bit here. Her stabilized the condition, and she's um, you know right side up and waiting for rescue at the moment. Knowing Abby, what, what, how do you imagine uh, she's handling this right now? What, what do you think she's doing, saying, thinking to herself? I think Abby's uh, quite a calm person, quite level-headed. So I think she knows the rescue's on its way, and just trying to uh, stay calm. I mean, uh, you know, as long as her boats, everything. Uh, together on that, uh, I I don't know. Just making sure everything's together and just waiting. It's uh, it's a waiting game. It's half a sailing, but um, she's definitely mastered that. So we'll uh, we'll know more in about uh, 24 hours in the rescue book. I'd say. You know, Lawrence and Marianne, as you might imagine, we've gotten a lot of reaction to this uh, on our website. Some supportive, some people saying critics of, of, of you are, are punishing bravery, but overwhelming majority questioning your decision as parents to allow Abby to do this. Here's one example from Jay Schindel. I'm appalled that her parents allowed this. She's too young to be out there alone. At 16, year old, you are, 16 years old, you are not old enough for a quest of this magnitude. What do you say to all those critics? I say, uh, well, you obviously don't know Abigail. You don't know um, how long she's been out there on the ocean or, or involvement with the ocean or her upbringing or her parents. And those people that are skeptical and have been skepti skeptical that have taken time to get to know Abigail realize that she's more than competent and, uh, to, to undertake this job. And the people that know me know that this wasn't an easy decision to make. It was made very carefully and um, Abigail had to prove herself beyond a shadow of a doubt that she was more than competent of undertaking this job. You know, let's face it, life is dangerous. How many teenagers die in cars every year? 
should we stop every teenager from driving a car? I mean, with, with the logic that these people are using, it doesn't make any sense well, because if, if their logic was followed through in every facet yeah. of life, kids, teenagers wouldn't be driving cars, they wouldn't be well, um, enjoying life. I mean, you know, we are so Abigail happy though. Went through a lot of training. I, I understand that, and, and we're out of time here. I'm just, we're so happy that Abby is safe this morning, and thank you for sharing her story with us today. It's, gr it's great news. Thanks so much.